Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser. Get ready for an adventure, and this just isn't any old adventure either. This is an adventure about something that's very old, very tasty, steam is involved, bread is involved. Tell us what we're talking about, Norm. We're talking about hot pastrami. Pastrami, and to start our pastrami adventure, we have come to the heart and soul of pastrami here in Los Angeles, to Langer's Deli downtown here at the corner of 7th and Alvarado. Your name, sir, is? Norm Langer. You're the owner. Yes. I am my father's son and, a, uh, shall we say, a product of his teachings. Absolutely, and his teachings involved pastrami. What's the history of pastrami? Pastrami is ori originally it came from Eastern Europe as far as we're led to believe and filtered through the United States and wound up in a Jew as a Jewish deli item. And what is pastrami? Pastra I love pastrami but I'm never sure what I'm eating. Different parts of the world use different cuts of meat. Here in the United States, generally in California, we use navels. Comes from the steer, a 2,000 pound steer, you'll get approximately a three or four pound navel. One piece of pastrami out of a 2,000 pound piece of cattle. You're kidding. So it just comes out of that one little part of the steer. That is correct. Wow, I had not absolutely no, is that what makes it so tender? It, the tenderness is, is done through processing, through curing, in pickling spices, through smoking, and through steaming. Okay, so, but the cut makes, it has some effect, doesn't it? Cut has a lot of effect, and it's cut, it's how you trim it, how you handle it. Yeah. You know, pastrami, like any other meat, has to be cut against the grain. And pastrami has many different grains in it in many different directions. All right, this is going to be exciting for us. Now, we've come down here. It's just barely 11 o'clock because it gets really crowded in here at lunchtime. We wanted to be able to at least move around a little bit in here. Elbow room is nice. Absolutely. But you like a nice crowded place. This is good. Yes, we do. Business is good. But we're going to leave the restaurant part and go back behind into the inner sanctums back here and get an up close and personal look at Langer's pastrami because it's different from almost any of the others, isn't it? it? It's my pleasure to take you back and show you the operation. We're going behind the counter right now. Okay, here we go. Open up the door. Oh! We are looking at some beautiful pastrami, aren't we? Indeed. It's, it's very beautiful. It's very good, sir. It's very nice and tender and stuff. Now, how long has that been? Has that been cooking in there or steaming in there or what? We steam our pastrami here at Langer's for about three to four hours on a daily basis. What's in here? We have corned beef and also Oh, pastrami. that's corned beef. Here we are. Oh, More corned beef here and, and pastrami beef. here. Yes, sir. Boy, look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, what do Thank you do? You. you take a piece of it out. Out here. And here with this, what we do with it. We take it out of here. Boy, look we'll how tender it, it looks side. tender. What we do, we trim it down. We take all the fat off, most of the fat off. Uh huh. Turn it over. Take the fat mm -hmm. off of the middle. Uh huh. So you got to know where to cut. You don't want to cut any of the good stuff off. You don't, you don't want to cut off too much of. Uh, you got to, you got to have a little bit of fat on there so it's tasty. Yeah. Otherwise, it's too dry. Uh, and this is how we slice it here. We hand slice the pastrami. Boy, look at this these slices. This is how slices. we do it. And you just kind of go by feel as to how thick the slices are. That's after you do it for a little while. How long have you, you been here at Langer's? Uh, I think it's about 25 years, sir. So you know what you're doing when it comes to cutting Well, if I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you didn't know by now, I guess I'll never learn, would I? Wow. <laughs> this is... This is how we do the pastrami here, sir. It looks so tender, Norm. Yes, it is. We try to bring it to an internal temperature of about 209 degrees to break the tissues down and make it juicy and tender. And it can take anywhere, as Jaime said, three to four hours. We've had some that come in a little bit tougher. It can take you five or five and a half hours. So what is the secret of a good pastrami? Is it the way it's cooked? the way it's steamed? It's a combination of everything. It's the entire process. From the packing house where the pastrami is pickled and cured, smoked, peppered, to receiving it here. When we receive it here, it is edible as far as being 
cooked, yeah. but it is chewy. It's like eating a racquetball. It hasn't been tenderized as far as breaking up. the tissue down. Well, there are places selling pastrami all over Los Angeles. Why is Langer's, why did everybody say if you're going to do a story about pastrami, you better come to Langer's? We pride ourselves on tender, juicy, something that's edible, something you can bite into without having to chew it that will melt in your Wait a mouth. Minute, you don't have to chew the pastrami here? Not, uh, not, not as you so do a tender. tough product. It's so tender that you don't have to worry about chewing it because... <laughs> you just very, gum it. It's very, very tender, sir. It's very, very When tender, I look, very. see, that's got some fat in it. In the middle. That's okay, right? Right. right. That's and boy, it's juicy. You can just see the juice coming out of look it. Look at it. Wow. Okay. Wow. And, and, and you asked me a question. The only good answer I have for you, sir, is do me a favor, try the pastrami. Try to see how, to, then you, you tell me how it's so, why it's so tender. How come you don't have to chew it? Oh my gosh. We have a convert, you'll be back. Oh my gosh. Does that answer your question, sir? That is so good. Yes, Look sir. at everybody smiling, everybody likes working here. Oh and, my and this God. is one of the best pieces of the pastrami. You try that Look piece. Look at this. Try that piece. Because it's an end piece. It's an end piece. got all the spices on there, and you try it. Very good. Oh, my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh! That's the most perfect answer I can give you about how come it's so good. Now, there you got your answer. Do you eat anything but pastrami? I do. I do, but pastrami mm. is one of the main sellers here. Mmm. Oh. Yes, sir. Is pastrami fattening? Oh, no, it's cholesterol free. No, no, come on, <laughs> seriously. Certainly it's fattening. No. <laughs> so you have to be careful. You can't come down here every day and eat pastrami. You can this, is a, this is a, a gift that you give when you, to yourself when you come down here Absol to eat a pastrami absolutely. sandwich. You can eat anything you want as long as it's in moderation. Right, right, okay. Now, is this, this is basically the way it's been prepared, the way it's been served, the way it's been cooked for generations, for it, hundreds, for it, thousands of years. It is, but the process that my dad came up with many years ago when he started the deli business was a way of breaking the tissues down and making the product tender. The other thing that he was very, very firm on is hand cut the product. By hand cutting it, it allows you to take every piece and cut it to its own needs. The grain of the pastrami constantly changes, and this way you can turn the meat and move it continually to cut against it. So basically, no two pieces of pastrami are the same, are they? You're right again, I sir. I mean, every single time you bring a piece, a big piece of meat out, you're not sure exactly what that cutting experience is going to be like. No, you have to feel the piece, you have to look at it, you have to trim it down so you know which way to cut. Did you learn this from experience? Uh, this isn't something you learn out of a book. This is something you uh, learn after being here all these you years. Learn, you learn that on a daily basis working around pastrami. Look at this. And working for Langer's here. Sir. Oh my gosh. That is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of meat right there. Steaming, it smells good, it's tender. It's gonna make a lot of people happy today. Yes, it is. Here at Langer's. Yes, it is, sir. Before we leave, Jaime wanted me to try one of these. Now, is this called, how is this on the menu? This is a number 44 on the menu. It's traditional Reuben, Reuben made with pastrami, a American Reuben cheese. sandwich. With cheese. It's pastrami, American cheese, sauerkraut, then it's grilled. Oh my gosh, hey, is this something your dad came up with? Another dad invention. Wow, and, and what an interesting combination. We've got several different combinations on the menu with pastrami. Wow. We even have one on the menu with pastrami, cream cheese, and tomato. Oh my gosh, but I like this one. This is the number? That's the number 44. Boy, so he's cutting it over here. I'm eating it over here. Mmm. 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 Oh. See, this is the problem. I could be here every day eating this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? You remember, well, remember what I told you about moderation? Yeah, but I want to come back and check and see if they're just as good tomorrow as they were today. Maybe you've done something special today. Yesterday, yesterday were better. 
<laughs> this is getting ridiculous. You won't let me leave. Well, it's not about me letting you leave. I just want you to try the best thing that we have in the store. This is the most popular That's item. That's the most popular item. What you're eating right now, it's also very, very good if you like sauerkraut. What is this? This is pastrami, coleslaw, Swiss cheese, and, and uh, Russian dressing on rye bread. It's called number 19 on the menu. And it's, it's the most popular. It's our biggest seller. Then we also have a traditional pastrami on rye with mustard, but this is the best seller here. I can't eat all this. We've got another stop on you this adventure. Just, just try a quarter of a sandwich so you can feel the difference between the, what you're eating right now. I'm just doing this to be polite. This one, is, this, this one is different. The contrast of the coleslaw and the Swiss cheese and the Russian dressing really brings out the pastrami. You can actually taste the coleslaw. The only dressing. thing I do want to comment, just so you can file it, this is steer pastrami, not cow pastrami. <laughs> steer pastrami. That's our, that's our claim to fame. That's a sandwich my dad came up with some 60 years ago and what we've sold the most of. We've sold over 4 million pounds of pastrami since we've been here. Okay, as our pastrami adventure continues, we have left Langer's Delicatessen and their pastrami, and we've come over cross town. We're now in West Los Angeles on Sepulveda, and we're visiting another pastrami icon. It's been right here serving pastrami for years. We're talking about Johnny's pastrami. She's smiling from ear to ear. Your name is? My name is Kathy. What a nice way to be greeted at Johnny's Thank Pastrami. You. How are you today? You know what? I've just walked in and I'm already getting good vibes. We've been here since 52, a lot of regulars, great food. It's got a good feel to it. Great place to work. Now, what is it that brings people back to this place? It's just a little place on the side of the road here. It's a little place, but it, our food's consistent. It's great food. It never changes. Do you have anything here besides pastrami? Yes, we do. We've got corned beef. We've got steak. We've got all beef Vienna but, hot dogs. But, but most people eat the pastrami. Most people eat the pastrami. Can we look at the pastrami? You sure can. Follow Where me. Where is, okay, it's back here. Okay, we've now positioned ourselves to get a real good shot of this pastrami. Raul, can you bring some of it out for us? And what is, explain to us what we're seeing here. Okay, well what they do is they shave it real fine and then they they boil it and heat it up in a beef broth, a natural gravy. Now he's not gonna hold it like no. that forever. Come on, he puts it, it in there and oh, drains you put it the in juices here. off. Yeah. Right, he puts it in there and drains the juices off. And after the juices are drained, then what happens? Then he gets a roll, get a French roll. Can we get a French roll roll and show how this works? And he dips out the juices. Oh, this is like a, fr oh! Ah, he dips it in the juices. He dipped it in there. Yeah. Right. And then and you put, then, make then he puts on as much make, as he can. Can you put some on? Can you make us a sandwich? Oh my gosh. Now see, we were at Langer's yeah. earlier and their pastrami is totally different. Yes, that's the difference between us and Deli's. We shave ours real fine. Cut it up for us. Let's take a look at that. Oh my gosh. So it's a whole nother look. It's yes. a whole nother yes. feel to it. Right. And it comes just plain like that, but we can put cheese on it if you like. We've got hot mustard. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Boy, that's a big sandwich, yes, too. Yes, it is. You didn't, you didn't just put that on there for us. No. That's the size that you make them this big? Yeah. Well, all right. Here it goes. Mm. It's a whole different feel to it than what I ate earlier today. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's still pastrami. Yes, it is. Yeah. Boy, it melts in your mouth, drips on your chin, <laughs> gets on your shirt. That's when you know it's good, when it gets all over the place. <laughs> They're eating their pastrami sandwiches. This is not a good time to do an interview because you got a mouth full of food. Mm -hmm. right. But you've been coming here a long time. Oh, since 1952. You have been coming here. You have been coming here since? 1959. Wow. And why do you keep, I mean, obviously. It hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. 
But jukeboxes are the same uh -huh. as it was in 1952. But wait a minute, you don't come here for the jukebox, you come here for yes, the pastrami. The yeah. is just pastrami. You're There's coming. no place that has a better pastrami than yeah, that. Have you tried it at other places? Oh, New York, everywhere. This is the best. And what makes this, can we hold this up so oh, yeah. the camera Absolutely. can get a good shot of it oh look the sun's coming right in on it it's like a piece of art right there isn't it now you don't eat that whole sandwich no we're taking half of this home so you always just eat half oh yeah we can't eat the whole thing and it's another meal it's another meal especially the pickles the pickles are unbelievable too so it's the pastrami the jukebox the pickles the whole thing enchilada the whole oh and the and the, and the uh, i don't have it yet but the strawberry Milkshake. Uh, milkshake is the best in town, Wait too. Wait a minute, you're drinking beer. Yeah, but the milkshake's coming. <laughs> the milkshake is the same as it was in 1952. So nothing changes oh, around here. Nothing changes, and that's why it's so great. We're out here on the patio with the fellow who's owned this establishment for over 40 years. It doesn't look it. Uh, yeah, and you know what? There's a <laughs> secret, too, isn't there, to this pastrami? That's right. Absolutely. Are you going to tell us, or it's a? You just said it. There's a secret to this pastrami. But you know what? I'm getting the feeling it's more than just the pastrami. It's the atmosphere. It's the sense of family, of familiarity, all of that here. Yes, that's true. We have second, third generation kids coming here. Yeah, and coming here for years. She's loaded down. I'm going to follow you. Oh, look. Pastrami, and pastrami, French fries. Oh, a nice low carb, low cal meal, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, I came back to visit with the two sisters here, and you told me that I have been shortchanged. Yes. That this is just pastrami. Yes, it is. You need, you need, need the coleslaw on the top, then you need the, the tomato beer. that comes with it, and then the lettuce. And then you put a little dab of, you know, because they have a special ketchup with mustard sauce in here. Uh -huh. and, you, and you slap a little bit of that on there, you know, besides using it for your, for your french fries. So you shortchanged me. Well, I told you that we had the hot mustard, and of course you got to have but the pickles she puts on it. Coleslaw. Pickles. Oh, the pickles are dynamite. What's, oh. the, what's the deal taste on the pickles? Pick, taste it, taste it. Taste of pickles. Taste They're it. wonderful. Pickles. Wait till you taste Lovely. the pickles. Yeah, you won't believe it. You'll just die. Aren't, Aren't they the greatest things you ever tasted? They're good. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know whether they're the greatest thing I've ever tasted, but they're good. Well, they're just different. They're just seasoned just right. <laughs> well, the pickles at Johnny's were good. And they had lots of other tasty items on the menu as well. But, of course, we were there for the pastrami, which was not only good, but historic as well. They've been cooking up and serving their pastrami to happy customers at Johnny's since 1952. Same for Langer's Deli, which has been cooking up and serving their pastrami to their happy customers since 1947. And even though the pastrami's different at each of these two establishments, trust me, at both places, it's definitely the real deal. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.